I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Classic Version. You know, that's my favorite, and that's what I do a lot of my studying from. So, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered abroad among the Gentiles in the dispersion, greetings and rejoice. Now, that's an interesting verse to me. I didn't go ahead and do a lot of research on it. But you recognize what he says here. He's greeting the 12 tribes that were scattered abroad. Then they're not lost. They're not lost. Hmm. They were scattered abroad. Hmm. We've had a lot of teaching on the lost tribes. Hmm. But right here he says, to the 12 tribes scattered abroad amongst the Gentiles. Well, glory. We're going to leave that right there. <laughs> <laughs> and now James begins to describe testing and the different kinds of temptations that we may encounter. Remember, this is a word for the year. And how we need to overcome. We've been talking this morning about overcoming. So how we need to overcome. And in that, I want us to also consider as a parallel scripture, 1 Peter 1, verse 6 and 7. 1 Peter 1, verse 6 and 7. It says, You should be exceedingly glad on this account, though now for a little while you may be distressed by trials and suffer temptation, so that the genuineness of your faith may be tested. Your faith, which is infinitely more precious than the perishable gold, which is tested and purified by fire. This proving of your faith is intended to redound to your praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, is revealed. So when we are tested and when we come through temptations victoriously, it is so that Christ may be glorified. We will receive the good of it because he's taking away the things. Testing makes you search your own heart. It makes you get on your face before God. It makes you dig into the word of God and you actually become stronger because you've endured and pressed through the battle. Now, every one of us are witnesses of that. It would be so easy to sit down and just not press through. Why can't I just stay where I am? I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. And God says, no, if you're gonna serve me in this year, in 2023, this is a year you're going to have to endure and you're gonna to have to press through when it's really getting sticky and dark and messy out there. You're gonna to have to press through, but recognize the hope that he's been has given you here the hope he said the lord says it's greater than gold that's been tested in the fire god is purifying us he in a border but see is the bride of christ that's what's going on so when the enemy tries to mess with you and i've been through three major battles in the past few weeks you just push back because God is going to receive more and more glory and you're going to receive more and more good. We've said this many times. The deeper the pit the enemy tries to dig for you, the higher the mountain you're going to have on the other side. Mm -hmm. And when you get to that mountain, you're going to see into the realm of the spirit like you never have. Mm -hmm. It's worth the price. God is worth the price of knowing really knowing. I don't want to just mention his name. I want to know his being. You know, oh, Shabbat. I want to be in his presence. Last week, the Lord invited us. We were in the very throne room of God, and he spread out the skirt of his garment, and he invited us like little girls to come and sit on that garment and just observe him. <laughs> Glory. That is the privilege of being a daughter of God. Mm -hmm. And we will praise him when it's all done. Mm -hmm. God is keeping a record. You have to understand that. Mm -hmm. And God approves. He approves. 
And just recently, the Lord spoke to me something I will treasure forever. He said, your blood has been mingled with mine. What is that worth to you? What is that worth to you? We're going to rejoice because we've dared to believe and endure it. And in the process of believing and enduring, we get the opportunity to witness. We get the opportunity to tell others of the goodness of our God and what he has done for us. It all fits together in God's plan. So don't give up no matter what. Don't ever quit. Pick yourself up. Let God dust you off and you keep right on going. He will refill you. He will renew you. And step by step, he will remove the history and let you have freedom to walk in the now and in the future as a servant of the Most High God. Going back to James chapter 1, verse 2. Consider it wholly joyful, my brother, whenever you are enveloped in or encounter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. Count it all joy. Now, just a normal human being cannot possibly do that. We're able to do it because of the grace of God, the word of God, and the power of the Holy Ghost inside of us. He's inside of us to get us and keep us in that joy. you got to focus your mind on God. And in this year, this is what God's talking about. In this year, you're going to have to again and again, in order to count it all joy, you're going to have to focus on the Lord. And the New Testament, only the New Testament, we are told to be glad 14 times. We are told to rejoice 37 times. Get the smile on, but it's got to come from in here. You got to mean it. We are the children of the Most High God. Scientific tests have been taken, and you can read this article in Intercessors for America. It was up on their reports this past week about joy. About joy. Joy is the opposite of stress. So when you start getting stressed out, you need to laugh. <laughs> and I'm not talking about surface laughter. You can tell when somebody's just laughing, but they don't mean it from the inside. I'm telling you, if you'll just get with Jesus and let him tickle you <laughs> and let him really get you into that joy, and you, and you, why did they used to call us holy rollers? We would get so into God. The world fades away. If you do that, you have absolute victory over the devil. He can't touch it. The joy of the Lord. Whatever the test may come, count it all joy. This man said in his article, he did a three-year study. I don't know how to do that, but he did a three-year study. His, his name is Fred DeFoy. Fred DeFoy. And he saw that joy has really a potential to have an impact on our mental health. It can really prevent mental disorder because the neurological system that joy activates in the brain is really the same one that counters the one that builds up stress. So if you've gotten stressed, if you start getting <laughs> joyful, it counteracts that stress and it has to leave you. True happiness comes from God. True joy comes from the Lord. He also said joy facilitates learning. You want your kids to learn more? Your grandkids? They need to be happier. They live in a very dark world. They need to know joy. Children are supposed to know joy. Now what about in our personal relationships? Joy can promote and allow collective intelligence. Now listen to this. Like on a team or on a board meeting or in a committee or even within your family, joy will build relationship. Look at that. So you want better unity around the table? Bring some laughter in. Something that makes them begin to feel good. And it'll bless 
and bring unity. When there are people joyfully connected to themselves, and when you're happy with yourself, you're full of joy yourself. How many times a day do you have to just laugh at yourself? Ah, a whole lot. <laughs> joyfully connected to yourself and to God and to others, you are unstoppable. Doesn't matter what the odds are. Doesn't even matter what the persecution is. Doesn't matter if you're surrounded by trials. If you maintain the joy of your salvation bubbling up inside of you, you cannot be stopped and you will not quit. So I advise us in 2023... Get to the secret place. I don't care what your schedule is. Make God first. And sometimes life makes things so busy, then take at least one day that you carve out some time and you don't let anything intrude on it. And you give God at least a whole morning until you know you've come into presence and he's able to take off that stress and bring a fresh baptism of that joy into your life again. I'm trying to tell you how to be victorious this year. This is the word. You're going to sing your way through the darkness. Amen. Best way to do that, if you can't do it out of your intellect, let the Holy Ghost sing. The Holy Ghost singing through you cleans your house out like a dust mop. It's amazing. Remember, women set the tone of any dwelling place. So be careful. So we got to study the word, believe the word, and activate the word this year. And the Lord has promised he will give us light for our pathway. Now, he didn't tell you you're going to see two years down the road, although every now and then he'll do that. But he's telling you, what's the word say? You'll have light for your feet. <laughs> so that you take the next step correctly. You won't have to retrace your steps because every step has been guided by God. And wait for that guidance. What did Jesus tell the Samaritan woman in John 4? Learn to drink from me, for my well of water will never run dry. Well, so we need to experience the reality of the Lord Jesus Christ day by day in 2023. Now what's going to happen? We will be changed. We will be made stronger spiritually. Verse 3 says, Be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith bring out endurance, steadfastness, and patience. What God wants us to do this year is grow up. <laughs> yeah. I don't care what you age. I got you beat. What's your age? It's time to grow up. It's time to grow strong. It's time to increase your faith. Endurance is the ability to withstand hardship, adversity, and stress. Because there will be hardship, adversity, and stress this year. Individually, collectively, as nations. Mm -hmm. But we're also, I've seen it in the spirit, we're also going to break through to new levels of glory. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to keep you. That's what's going to keep you. The glory is going to keep you. You'll be able to keep going. Steadfastness is to be firmly established. Determined. Determined. Now, I'm not telling you to be a bulldog, although it might pay off. <laughs> we'll be balanced in it. Don't growl at everybody. Okay. Patience means long-suffering. Long suffering. We don't like to suffer. I was ministering to a person in another state. And we were talking on the phone. I've known her for years. And she was dealing with a situation and about a new job. And, and there was an individual there who's not a believer and was... She didn't know how it was going to possibly work. So we prayed. We prayed and we prayed. And she went to the staff meeting Monday, and she could see it. She could see how it was working, because this person's not a believer, then they're not sensitive to what God is saying. 
they're not sensitive to the flow of the spirit. So if a person who's not sensitive to God is making major decisions in a ministry, you're in trouble. Mm. And she called me Monday night and we prayed again. She got her frustration out, gave it to me, and gave it to God. And so I get a text from her yesterday. She said, during the night, God spoke to me. And he said, I've put you here to bring her to salvation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Her whole attitude changed. Because mm -hmm. then she could see why she was there. Mm -hmm. And what her mission was. Mm -hmm. And so now we're praying for that young lady's salvation. Because when she gets saved, then she will look at the job appropriately, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, sometimes we have to deal with our blood before we get into Christ's blood. <laughs> we have to let God take care of the emotions, and our emotions are very real, and they have to be taken care of. But you have to get into the flow of who he is. You have to do that. Verse 4, let endurance and steadfastness and patience have full play and do a thorough work. <clears throat> so that you may be people perfectly and fully developed with no defects, lacking in nothing. When I have taught this before, I call it the lesson, zero defects. <laughs> zero defects. And he says, this is the way you get it. Let endurance, steadfastness, and patience do the thorough work in you that they need to do. This is a year to grow. Remember, our motto this year is go and grow. It's a year to grow, to become, to be fully developed. For decades, the church, per se, the church has drifted into patterns of weakness, non-commitment, failing to read the word for themselves, failing to pray. But now this year, there is a clarion call for excellence to every believer. And those that don't choose it this year will pay a high price next year in 2024. This is a year of grace and mercy over us in the midst of the hardships that we can grow in God and we've got to choose to. The church has got to grow up. It's not meant for 20% of the church to run the church and make sure everything is done the way Christ wants it done. We are everyone believers and we all have a part. You don't necessarily have a position in the church, but you have a position in the body. And the body has to function together as one. What would happen if you broke off a few fingers and a few toes? You couldn't function. And that's the way it is in the church, and that's why the church has so much problems. We fragment the body that God said had to be together under his headship. God help us be strong in the Lord, draw close to him, be a true follower this year, be a disciple. Verse 5, if any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally, ungrudgingly, without reproaching or fault-finding, it will be given him. So don't be afraid to ask. God is already telling you, I'll answer. If you lack wisdom, I will answer you. I will give you what you stand in need of, the counsel of the Lord, to be successful and overcome. My husband, his motto was, not somehow, but triumphantly through Jesus Christ. And that's the way he lived his military career. He had it, he had not somehow, but triumphantly in, on a brass plaque sitting in the middle of his desk. So when his troops came in, that's exactly what they were looking at. <laughs> Sometimes it brought about some interesting conversations. And when it did, he got to talk to them about the Lord. Study. Study. The word says to study and show yourself approved. I want to be approved by God. There may be some people that don't approve of me. I can't be moved by them. Just don't let it happen. If God tells you 
You are what I died to make you. That's all you need. You just keep on trucking. You just keep on trucking with Jesus. Get ready, because very soon he's going to give us a horse to ride. And we're going to go with him into battle. All right. According to Proverbs 2, the diligent pursuit of wisdom brings security. Any of you feel insecure? The diligent pursuit of wisdom brings security. And we are to seek after that wisdom like we would silver and search it out as though it was a hidden treasure because it is. It's the wisdom of God. The word also says in Proverbs that wisdom is walking in the streets. Who's going to choose? Who's going to choose wisdom? God is so generous. Mm -hmm. yes. The further instruction in verse 6 is, only it must be in faith that he asks with no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting. For the one who wavers, hesitates, and doubts is like the billowing surge out at sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. That makes me seasick. You ever watch one of those movies where they're all the way up and they're all the way... No, I will make myself seasick. You, you just can't do anything that way. People can be very wishy-washy. God is solid, and he has definite plans and a definite word. And we have to bring ourselves under that discipline of following him that way. I have worked with people, even in the last few years, that had such incredible opportunities, but they never made up their mind. They kept speaking as though they were speaking in faith. But they may, never made the decision and walked into it. Beloved, you've got to not only make the decision, it has to come from deep inside of you that knowing God said, now I step into this and I activate it. I activate it. You've got to activate your faith. You can't just have it up here or even just in here. You've got to let your actions declare the faith that you have in God. And he will back you up 100%. Verse 7, for truly, let not such a person imagine that he will receive anything he asks for from the Lord, this wishy-washy person. Because for being as he is, a man of two minds, like having a split personality, a man having two minds, hesitating, doubting, irresolute, He's unstable, he's unreliable, he's uncertain about everything he thinks and feels and decides. He's out of balance and he's going to fall. You've got to know what you believe and you've got to act on it this year. Don't get out of balance and if you feel like you're getting a little out of balance, go back to the foot of the cross and pray until God makes you stable again. Anytime your emotions want to start taking over your life, and especially the emotion of fear, that's a direct attack from Satan. Go back to the safe place, to Jesus, and let him eradicate that fear and put that faith back in you. We can't live this life without the presence of the Lord. Amen. It is the Holy Ghost who takes us through. Now, the next three verses are a test of humility. And so this is the next thing the Lord wants us to look at ourselves about. And also in your relationships. Sometimes you can recognize what the problem is in areas simply by watching for this one thing. Humility. Humility. I've got to be honest. I get so concerned sometimes. I'll, sometimes I'll go out and I'll watch different preachers or whatever. I get very, very concerned when all I hear is I, I, I. Where's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus? Mm -hmm. I also get concerned for the flock that follow because they see some element of power and they get drawn into it. Instead of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and seeing him rule and reign over their services, it is everywhere. So guard yourself and guard your heart 
very, very carefully. Freedom from pride and arrogance is an essential. Jesus is our example of meekness and humility. He is the highest one. He is the richest one. He is the mightiest one in the whole universe. Yet he humbled himself, disrobed himself, took on human flesh so he could save us. Humility. Walked those dusty roads, took all those things from the religious spirit and the threats of Satan. For us. And then even stripped beaten and taken to the cross. You talk about humility. We haven't been even tested yet. God requires. God requires. If you will come to Jesus on bended knee, he'll reach down his hand and draw you up and put his arms around you. No one. No one. Humility will be a key this year. So watch for that. I don't care whether you're watching politics or whether you're watching the church. Watch for humility and be sure you carry it yourself. Listen to the checks of the Spirit. It is so easy to step over into pride. It's scary. We may be good at something. And it's done and we get complimented on it. Nothing wrong with that unless it starts becoming pride. Mm -hmm. Everything you and I will ever have is the gift of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And only because God has kept us. How many times has the enemy tried to kill you all your life? How many times? I could give you a whole list. Very real. Only by the grace of God do I stand here. He has kept me. And sometimes, after we've been in a meeting or we've talked with people or something, on the way home, see, God does put a little chain around and says, Eep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it gets our attention, if you're being honest with God. And he said, it wasn't what you said. It was the attitude of your heart when you said it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you really love him, that just goes, oh, God, not again. Will I ever grow up? Repent. Just repent and above all, forgive yourself because yeah. you're a human becoming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> forgive yourself. And let him remind you and, and that that error won't happen again by his grace. Okay. The Holy Spirit's a faithful witness. And if he keeps checking you on things, it's because God's trying to perfect you into something greater. A vessel he can really honor and use. A vessel of victory for his kingdom. James writes in verses 9 through 11. Let the brother in humble circumstances glory in his elevation as a Christian. Called to the true riches and to be an heir of God. And the rich person ought to glory in being humbled. By being shown by his human frailty. Because like a flower of the grass, he'll, he's going to pass away. For the sun comes up with a scorching heat and parches the grass and its flower falls off and its beauty fades away. Even so will the rich man wither, die in the midst of his pursuits. We are all equal at the foot of the cross. And I'm going to read one more scripture that compares to this to give you another viewing point of what God is saying to us for this new year. 1 Peter 5, verses 5 through 6 paints a picture for us. He says, Likewise, you who are younger and of lesser rank, be subject to the elders, the ministers and spiritual guides of the church, giving them due respect and yielding to their counsel. Clothe, and the word is apron yourself. Imagine yourself, you're at home, you're getting ready to do something, and you put on an apron. Immediately, you've taken on the garment of a servant. And that's what Peter's saying here. If I came and stood in front of you with an apron on, you would know I'm about to serve. When Jesus washed the feet of the disciples that last night, 
He took off his regular garment and girded himself with a towel. It was like putting an apron on of a very low servant to wash their dirty feet. Never forget that. Okay. And the Lord just said, I need to just share one thing, and then we're going to go to you. In the latter years of my life with my husband, we came under a teaching about washing one another's feet. And they were talking, actually we were doing it at a Passover Seder. And the, and the host and hostess washed everybody's feet. And then they suggested to all the couples that were there, if you really want to take care of your marriage when you need to, wash each other's feet. I didn't say anything. But the next thing I know, a few weeks later, my husband comes to me and he says, I think I need to wash your feet. I looked at him like, are you kidding? <laughs> and that night we washed each other's feet. And a sense of humility and peace came into our homes. <clears throat> so deep because this mighty warrior this military officer had bowed his knee and repented for hurting me over something and it brought this new union at a higher level into our marriage we did it several times after that before his death I've had meetings where I've had women where I would just put a whole bunch of towels out and I'd get a great big old fashioned wash tub and at the end of the service all the music still going on and they would make a long line and they would step into the waters. They would step into the waters and there'd be a prayer warrior on either side of them, somebody on the other side to help them get out. I'm telling you, some of them got stuck in the tub. <laughs> I didn't know that kind of service was going to take so long. But there were some of them that honestly they couldn't get out of the tub. God stuck them there until he was done washing. Mm. Wow. We need these actions of humility. These actions of humility. Clothe, apron yourself, all of you with humility as the garb of a servant so that its covering cannot possibly be stripped off of you with freedom from pride and arrogance toward one another. For God sets himself against the proud, the insolent, the overbearing, the disdainful, the presumptuous, the boastful. He opposes, frustrates, and defeats them, but gives great grace and favor and blessing to the humble. Therefore, in 2023, humble yourself. Demote and lower yourself in your own estimation under the mighty hand of God that in due time he may exalt you. Now here is the balance. You walk in the humility like Christ did, but at the same time there was never one moment of his life that he didn't know he was God. He was king. And that's the balance. Know who you are in Christ but walk like he did in humility and get that job as a general done for him correctly. Because the <clears throat> Lord never just cuts heads off. If he has to cut, he then cauterizes. We have to act as he acted, amen? amen. And now Rita's gonna lead us in singing through this, James, this chapter. <laughs> Spirit on your daughter. 
Your man. 